Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about axes, and we'd like to thank JT for giving us a five-star rating and review on Amazon for our new ebook. It's called Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, Book 12. And as JT says in his review, it's only a buck. <laughs> Historians have found evidence of hand axes dating back around 40,000 years, and axes with handles date back around 6,000 years. The stone head was held in place with animal hide straps, but historians are pretty sure that axe-like tools go back much further in time. Hmm. The Roman legions used axes for construction as they expanded their empire, and carvings from ancient Rome show two-sided battle axes. The ancient Crete and Egyptians used axes for battle and construction, and the Vikings had a wide range of axes for battle. Exciting. Axes and hatchets brought over from Spain, England, and France were an essential tool for the first colonists in America. They had axes for chopping down trees, specialized axes for cutting logs into square lumber, and axes for shaping wood. Mm. In the U.S., you'll see axe spelled A-X. In the U.K., it's spelled A-X-E. Which one's right? (laughs) They're both right. (laughs) I spoke to Fiskars. It's F-I-S-K-A-R-S. They say an axe is an essential homeowner's tool for gardening and landscaping. You can remove limbs from a tree, cut down and remove trees and shrubs, split logs for a fireplace, wood stove, or a fire pit. And there's quite a few types of axes, but the three main styles for a homeowner are a chopping axe, a splitting axe, and a hatchet. A chopping axe is also called a felling axe, F-E-L-L-I-N-G. And felling just means cutting down a tree. So a chopping axe is going to have a thin edge for cutting through wood fibers when you're chopping down a tree or cutting the trunk into smaller logs or for removing limbs. Okay. A splitting axe has a wider wedge-shaped head to split the logs into smaller pieces for firewood. So this is designed to slide in between the fibers and force them apart. A splitting axe isn't going to be as good for chopping, and they generally have a heavier head, so it's much better for cutting straight down into a log. Mm. And a chopping axe isn't going to be as effective for splitting because that narrow head can get stuck easier between the fibers of a log. Okay. Some splitting axes are called a maul, M-A-U-L. Companies have different definitions of a maul, but it's usually a heavier splitting axe. It's five to eight pounds where just a standard splitting axe is three to five pounds, depending on the company. Malls will have wider heads, and most will have a sledgehammer on the back side of the head to drive metal splitting wedges into logs. Hmm. So if you're planning on using splitting wedges for logs, make sure the maul is rated for use with metal wedges. Some heads aren't heat-treated or forged, so you're not supposed to be hammering against metal. It can deform it or break it, crack it apart. Hmm. Malls also usually have longer handles than a splitting axe. Okay. What is a splitting wedge? It's a small piece of metal that's wedge-shaped, and you're using this to split your logs into firewood rather than a splitting axe. It's heat-treated or forged, so it's going to withstand being driven into a log with a sledgehammer, or you can use the back end of a maul. I spoke to Estwing. It's E-S-T-W-I-N-G. They have a top-rated wedge called Sure Split Wedge. It's five pounds and almost nine inches long. Hmm. So you put this on top of a log and then you pound it into the log. There's also diamond-shaped or cone-shaped wedges, and that puts more pressure on the wedge. Trooper and Husky have diamond wedges. Interesting. A hatchet is a small one-handed axe, which is good for camping, backpacking, or for projects around the house. You can use it for splitting up firewood, for kindling, or shaving off pieces of wood for tinder, or chopping down small branches from trees and shrubs. You can use the back of the head for pounding in tent stakes if you're camping. Some companies have one-hand axes with a short handle. A hatchet generally has a smaller, lighter head than an axe. 
And at the home centers I looked at, the hatches range in handle size from 10 to 17 inches long. Okay. When I spoke to Estwing, they said tomahawks are popular now. So they're similar to... (laughs) Just everybody in general. (laughs) So it's similar to a hatchet. It's a small one-handed axe. You can use it for cutting, chopping, and clearing. It was originally used by the military in the 1700s because guns were not reliable. So the small, narrow head could be used as a hatchet for wood, but it was also an effective weapon for hand-to-hand combat. Mm. Crazy, huh? Estwing makes a tomahawk axe for camping and the military. So one side has a hatchet, the other side is this point. So the military uses it for punching out windows, opening metal cans, and then cutting and chopping wood. Mm Mm-hmm. When you're shopping for an axe, there are different shaped heads, and these are developed by companies for their location and the type of wood that their customers are cutting. Most axes, though, for chopping wood are going to have a curved cutting edge, and this is going to be the most versatile. Just a small portion of the edge is making contact as it hits the wood, so you're going to get better penetration. A less curved head is used for shaping or chopping out sections of wood. Okay. Compare any warranties or special features on the axe heads. Grants Forest Brook, for example, has a 20-year warranty on their axe heads. Estwing, Husky, and Fiskars has a lifetime warranty. Hmm. Fiskars says that their axe heads are hardened forged steel that have a non-stick coating, and that's going to help keep the head from getting stuck in wood. What was that first company you said? Grands Fors Brook. And you're not going to spell that one. <laughs> I figure we have a lot of Swedish people <laughs> listening to our podcast. So Grands Fors, G-R-A-N-S-F-O-R-S, capital B-R-U-K. Thank you. If you see the term single bit, it means that there's one side with a cutting edge, and this is going to be the most common axe. It's going to be easier to control for most people. The back of the head is called the butt or the pole, P-O-L-L. And the weight and the thickness of the pole is going to help with the balance and control when you're swinging the axe and when it makes contact with wood. Hmm. Some axes will have a hardened pole, so it can be used for hammering. Estwing says some people like a double-bit axe. They find it more balanced. This has a cutting edge on both sides of the head, so it looks like a battle axe. You can sharpen one side for chopping and leave the other side less sharp for splitting or cutting into roots or use it for trenching or projects where you wouldn't want to use your chopping axe. Hmm. Many professional lumberjacks use a double bit axe. When I was looking at chopping axes online and in the home centers, they ranged in length from 23 inches to 35 inches. Fiskars recommends grabbing the axe below the head and hold your arm straight out with the handle pointing towards your chest. A good length for most people will end at your armpit. A longer handle is going to give you a little more power, and a shorter handle can give you more control. Hmm. And the handle is usually going to be wood, fiberglass, metal, or a composite with a full-size axe. Have you ever used one? Sure. Yeah, I've used an axe a lot over the years. I've never used an axe. Really? You haven't lived. So you've used an axe on a project. (laughs) I have an old Sears chopping axe. It has a fiberglass handle. I'm sure it was from my dad, because I always got tools from Sears every Christmas when I was a young guy, just starting investing in real estate. It's 31 inches long, weighs about three pounds. It's probably a little big for me. Like if I were to measure from my hand into my armpit, I'd probably want... you just did in front of me. Right. I'd probably want a 25 or 26 inch axe. But I've learned to handle it. (laughs) So I use this for chopping down landscape trees, chopping up roots out of bushes and trees on my properties. Hmm. When you're comparing handles, a wood handle is going to absorb shock and it can be replaced, although it's easier to break than other material. Wood is usually hickory or ash. Fiberglass and composite handles are lightweight and durable. Metal is very durable, but it's going to be heavier. Fisker said their axe handles are known for their balance and shock absorption, and they told me that their fiberglass composite is virtually unbreakable, Mm. and it's slip resistant. You quizzed me about virtually on another episode, so I had to look. Do you listen to us? (laughs) Yeah, every once in a while. (laughs) So virtually is nearly or almost, and it comes with a lifetime warranty. Cool. Some handles will have a curve, some are straight. 
Many will have a curved knob on the end, and that helps maintain your grip on the axe. A couple articles I read say a straight handle will give you more accurate control. The chopping axes generally range from a little over 2 pounds to around 5 pounds. A lighter axe is going to help you control it easier with less effort. If you're going to be using an axe often or have experience, a heavier axe can chop deeper into wood. One article I read said a felling axe around 3 pounds is a good weight for any experience level. You should wear safety goggles or glasses if you're using an axe, especially if you're chopping down at the ground where you could possibly hit a stone or construction debris. Some mm. top-rated safety glasses come from Klein Tools, DeWalt, Carhartt, 3M, and Pyramex. It's P-Y-R-A-M-E-X. And if you wear prescription glasses, look for OTG glasses. That stands for Over the Glasses glasses. <laughs> you should wear non-slip work gloves for a secure grip and it's going to reduce wear in your hands. I like a cotton work glove where the palm is dipped in rubber. Me too. It's, it's going to give you a good grip. It's breathable. It's flexible. I used to wear leather gloves, but they get slippery, especially in wet conditions. And if you're working out in wet conditions, leather tends to shrink. Hmm. When you're comparing axes, one that comes with a protective cover is helpful to prevent an accident. I read an article from the axe company Holtzbruch. It's H-U-L-T-S, capital B-R-U-K. They were founded in 1697, and in the 1800s, axes became a big part of their business. <laughs> they say a dull or chipped axe is going to be less effective, and it can actually be dangerous, so keep the blade sharp. A dull blade can bounce off wood or cause the head to turn and slide off the surface rather than cutting into it. Okay. They also recommend when you're splitting wood not to do it on the ground. Stones or debris on the ground can chip the blade, and you want to keep the blade away from your feet. So they're suggesting always use a chopping block, so an elevated block of wood for splitting logs. Mm -hmm. I spoke to Lansky. It's L-A-N-S-K-Y. They make axe sharpeners. They have an axe and tool sharpener called the Puck, P-U-C-K. Mm -hmm. It's circular in shape. One side has a coarse grit. The other side is a medium grit. And you just work it along the cutting edge of your axe using a circular motion and then overlapping the area as you move across it. Mm -hmm. The medium grit will maintain a sharp edge on your axe, and the coarse side can be used for nicks or if your axe gets very dull. Some other top-rated sharpeners come from Sharpal. It's S-H-A-R-P-A-L, AccuSharp, A-C-C-U-S-H-A-R-P, and Smith Products. Holtzbruch had some maintenance tips. They say never store your axe if it's wet or dirty. After you use your axe, clean off any sap or debris from the head, and you can use steel wool and acetone to clean mm. it. And they say keep the axe head oiled with a lightweight oil. Three-in-one one oil. Starrett, S-T-A-R-R-E-T-T, -T -T, or WD-40 works well. And routinely wipe down your wood handle with boiled linseed oil. They say never use raw linseed oil because it'll stay sticky. Hmm. <laughs> Gross. When you're protecting a wood handle with linseed oil, you're going to put some on a rag and rub it into the handle. Then you're going to take a clean rag and wipe off the excess. Mm -hmm. But you never want to bundle up and leave those rags in a garage or a shed. It can spontaneously combust. That's bad. Yeah, it's amazing. It evaporates so fast that it generates enough heat to cause a fire. But what's crazy is it can take an hour or two before it bursts into flames. Mm. So you don't think there's a problem. Right. You leave it, and then it can burst into flames. What should you do with the rags? So you should spread them out flat on a driveway and allow them to completely dry. Or you can lay them out flat and pour water on them and allow them to dry or you can put them into a metal can and fill it with water and then seal it. Okay. Forever? Forever. <laughs> the Egyptian king Tutankhamun. Right. He was buried in 1323 BC. Archaeologists have wondered why he had burn marks on him. And now they think that the linens that they used for his burial shroud were treated with linseed oil. And they spontaneously combusted after he was sealed inside his tomb. Wow. Weird, huh? Mm-hmm. If you have an axe with a wood handle and you break it, you can replace the handle. 
Hickory is popular. It's very durable. It's strong. It absorbs shock. What you would do is cut off the old handle at the base of the axe head and leave an inch or so so you can pound it out with a hammer. Or you can use a piece of wood or a large punch to pound it out. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be easier if you have a vise. Once you have it out, you're going to push in the new handle into the head. And you're going to tap it down with a mallet to seat it into the handle if you're using a vise. If you don't have a vise, you can just put the head on the handle and then tap it on the ground or tap it on some soft surface so you don't damage your handle. You're going to cut off the excess wood from the top of the head. The kit is going to come with a wood wedge. On the top of the handle, there's going to be a slot. You're going to pound that wood wedge into the top of the handle so it's snug. Some people will put a little bit of wood glue on there. You're going to trim off the excess wood from the top of the head, and then you're going to take the metal wedge that comes with it. Some come with two, but you're going to drive that metal wedge perpendicular to the wood wedge, and that's going to lock it in place. And this method has been used for hundreds of years, and it's the most effective way to lock the handle onto an axe head. I appreciate all your hand gestures. <laughs> Some top-rated axe companies, Fiskers, they've been in business since 1649, Gransforce Brooks since 1902, Holtzbrook since 1697, Estwing's been around since 1923, Husqvarna from 1689. Amazing mm -hmm. how long some of these companies have been in business. You should spell that. And Husqvarna, H-U-S-Q-V-A-R-N-A. And Hooey Man, H-O-O-Y-M-A-N, just because they sound cool. <laughs> Wilton Tools, it's W-I-L-T-O-N, has a top-rated splitting mall, and they've been in business since 1941. <laughs> Some top-rated hatchets, SOG, it's just the letters S-O-G, Estwing, Kershaw, it's K-E-R-S-H-A-W, and Gerber, G-E-R-B-E-R. -E -E cool. Do you have anything else to add? If you're looking for a new hobby, axe-throwing bars are becoming more popular around the country. So you've got booze and axe-throwing. What could go wrong? <laughs> How much cooler is that than darts? <laughs> and you should check it out online. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, CastBox, or your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our eBooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, books 1 through 12 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. And you can follow us on Instagram. I'll post a picture of my ex on Monday. Fix It Home Improvement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Deep, 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 deep,